out and turn with me to the book of Luke chapter 2. Amen? The book of Luke chapter 2. We're less than two weeks away from 2014. Incredible. Amen? Amen. Less than two weeks away. I heard an old man years ago say, how you uh, uh, exit one thing determines how you enter the next thing. Those of you that know me that I picked that up probably 20 some odd years ago. And I've always believed that how you leave this it determines how you enter that. How many agree with me? Say amen. amen. And I want you to leave 2013 with the peace that I've been preaching about all the month of December. It is imperative that you learn to live in peace. Amen. The peace that comes from the Lord. Jesus even said, we'll give you a scripture later on. Peace I leave with you. Peace I give unto you, not as the world gives. The world's peace can be a false sense of peace. It can be temporary. Just any kind of thing can cause an explosion and turn that peace into war or drama or chaos or confusion. But thank God the peace of Jesus Christ is with you in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what happens, what you see, what goes on in your family. You can live in the peace of God. Can I convince you tonight that many things that happen are to keep you in some kind of confusion. They're to keep you in some kind of uh, question. What is God going to do? Is God really going to help? Does God really heal? Does God really deliver? Can I tell you that nothing is impossible with God? This is why I've spent all year basically on this one thing. All things are possible to them that believe. It's not being a Baptist. It's not being a Methodist. It's not being a Church of Christ or a Catholic or even a Christian. It's the simple fact, what do you believe? Mm. Can I get a witness in the place? What do you believe? The Lord moves on your level of belief. The one thing that really pleases God is if you believe in him. If you want to give God pleasure, if you want to please him, he wants you to believe in him for all things are possible to them that believe. If you believe, Mark 11 says, you can command a mountain to get out of your way. Glory to God. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you can be saved. Hallelujah. That saved is not just from your sins. It's saved from anything and everything. Have you with me? Say amen. I believe in 2014, God wants to heal everybody in your family. God wants to fix every circumstance in your life. Is your child going through something? Listen, I believe God can correct it. God can fix it. God can mend it. But you're going to have to let the peace of God rule in your heart. How many of you with me say amen? Oh, but pastor, that's a huge promise. It's not my promise. It's the promise of the word of God. Hallelujah. How many of you with me say amen? That all things are possible to them that believe. We've been preaching since the 1st of December on these words beginning in Luke chapter 2. Hallelujah. If you're there, we're going to read them together. They'll be right up here. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in their fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Verse 9. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. Verse 10. And the angel of the Lord said unto them, that's Mary and, and, and Joseph, Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. How many of you believe you're a part of that all people? Amen. Which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly uh, there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. Let's stop right there. And on earth peace. Say it with me. And on earth peace, good will toward men. I thank God for those words. I thank God that that's what the heavenly host, they said glory to God in the highest and then gave you and I an answer for everything is the peace of Almighty God. We don't have to live in worry which makes things bigger than they are. We don't have to live in fear which torments our lives and gives us question marks about God. We can live in peace on earth and goodwill toward men because we have a king, we have a savior, we have a Lord we have a redeemer we have a deliverer we, we mm. 
He is the way, the truth, and the life. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. There's no such thing as abundant life without peace on earth, goodwill toward men. You can have money in your pocket but not have peace in your mind. You can have your family all in your house and it still not be a peaceful home. Sometimes even our own children are tormented by something in their chemical makeup, something in their brain, something in their body. And the doctor says it's this and that and that and this. But I came to tell all of you, the Lord's promised every one of us peace on earth. Go ahead and give God a crazy praise for that. It's hard to praise God for something that you don't believe exists. That's why today in a lot of places, there's not a voice of praise. There's not a shout of praise. Oh, when you really believe God can do it, you'll raise up your voice and praise God. It doesn't matter if you're a silent, introverted person. You'll raise up your voice and praise God if you really believe that nothing is impossible with God. That greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That God knows how to make the crooked place straight. Bring that mountain down. Exalt that valley and go before you, hallelujah, that your steps are ordered by the Lord, but that doesn't mean that that's God's will for you to go through that. It means that God can get you out of that, order your steps to get out of that in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Peace on earth. Let me develop this. We've been preaching about it all month long. Isaiah chapter nine, verse six. Isaiah chapter nine, verse six. says his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. The reason that Jesus was given the title, Jesus in the word from Genesis to Revelation has over 300 titles just given to his name. Every one of those titles represents something in the character of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus? He's the word made flesh and dwelt among us. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God and all things were made by him, by the word. Every Everything is made by the word of God. Even peace is made by the word of God. Your victory is created by the word of God. Your breakthrough is created by the word of God. What do you not have? What does not exist in your heart, in your mind, in your family? What does not exist in your life? The word of God can create it so that you can live in peace and joy in Jesus' name. He is the prince of peace. Say that with me. The prince of of peace. Give the Lord a thank you for that. Would you do it with me? The Prince of Peace. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 33. 1 Corinthians 14 33. God is not the author of confusion but of peace. We have way too much confusion in our homes. Way too much confusion even in the church when the church is called the pillar and the ground of the truth. We're confused. Does the Lord save? Does the Lord deliver? Does the Lord heal? What does the Lord do anymore? It seems like, you know, people don't even know. They've got so many question marks about God. The church is 2,000 years old. You would think by now we would have all the question marks removed and know by now, look what the Lord can do. Come on. Why have these question marks risen up? It's because people are still wondering what the Lord is and what the Lord can do. Water down the word of God. Water down, say, well, this is God's will. That's God's will. Let me tell you what God's will is, is for you to live in peace. For your home to live in peace. For you as a couple, if you are, to live in peace. For your children to live in peace. Come on. Even if there's wars and rumors of wars, even if the country goes crazy, even if there's drama at work, you can still live in peace. Why? Because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. We're letting all of this stuff out here become greater to us than God is. Letting all of these situations worry us, depress us, work against us. But if God be for us, who can be, what can be against us? Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. Even if the doctor tells you you've got this in your body, then here's what you answer. But I've got God in my body too. <laughs> huh? 
I remember when they told my mother that she had breast cancer and she called me on the phone. This was years ago. She said, the doctor told me today I have breast cancer. And I said, well, mama, I'm telling you that you don't. We're going to believe God. She went, she went back to the doctor and told him, I want you to do the test again. And they did the test again and it was all gone. I remember when Dr. B.J. Estes uh, was going to put my mother, told her that she was a diabetic. And she went back to him and said, I want you to do all the tests again. He said, Gene, I'm not going to do it. She said, if you don't do it, I'm going to go to another doctor because I'm telling you, and he ran all the tests and she wasn't a diabetic. Hallelujah to God. Come on. Look what the Lord can do. Come on. We've got all these questions. We need to get them. We've got all this confusion. We need to get them out of the way. You know why we're confused? Because some preacherette with some sermonette made us doubt God. A Sunday school made us doubt God. Some kind of happening in life made us doubt God. There's a sweet lady in our church right here. She's here tonight. I won't tell her name, but she got up and told me that her and her husband taught Sunday school for years and years and years and years, but never taught this truth, never taught the word of God like this, never knew that they could teach the word of God like this. Kind of taught it as a story. Kind of taught it as some history. But didn't tell it, you'll know the truth and the truth shall make you free. This is not just history. This is not just a story. It's not just Bill O'Reilly killing Jesus. It's the way, the truth, and the life in the name of the Lord. Somebody give God a crazy praise. Huh? Are you with me? Are you with me? God is not the author of confusion. If there's confusion in your life about things, God did not author it. It came from an enemy that wants to steal, kill, and destroy. We need a real shield of faith wherewith we shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. How do we get that faith? Romans 10, 17, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. One time in the Old Testament, three times in the New Testament, the Bible says the just shall live by faith. You can't live any other way. If you're saved, you've got to live by faith. What is faith? Faith is to believe in something that you cannot see. But the reward of that faith is that you will see what you believe. Do you love the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Romans 14, 17. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. I've talked to you so much about this. Everybody's trying to earn it. Everybody's trying to earn righteousness. They're still trying to obey the law. They're trying to earn it. I'm trying to be good. You don't have to try to be good. You are the righteousness of God if you believe in Jesus Christ. You need to quit trying to be good and use all that you have to just believe. Come on. That's what God's looking for is just believe. All you need to do, if you believe in the power of the blood of Jesus, if you believe in the forgiveness that Jesus offers, he declares you righteous. Righteousness simply means in right standing with God. God says to you, you're in right standing with me. You may not be with nobody else, but if you're right standing with God, that's peace, baby. And if you understand that righteousness, then you have peace and then you have joy. You can go through churches all around the world right now. And right now the church is being persecuted like it was in the times of the Romans. It's being persecuted by Muslims and Hindus all over the world. It's the most unbelievable thing you've ever seen in your life. In one country last year, they went into over 40 churches and they hung the pastor with nails on the wall and they bled to death on the wall just in one nation. In Nigeria alone, they're finding every pastor they can find and they're killing every minister that they can find in Nigeria. But while they're still doing that, there's one church in Lagos, Nigeria that's running over 250,000 people in one church. Incredible. Incredible. How many of you love the Lord? Say amen. Absolutely incredible. Hallelujah. Do you love me? All right, listen to me. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy. Once you know that you're in right standing with God, that's the peace that you need. That's the joy that you need. Hallelujah. We've got people flooding into churches and they don't even know what joy is. 
You talk to them, they have no joy. Once you know that you're in right standing with God, it's going to give you peace. It's going to give you joy. Your health will begin to improve. Your life will begin to improve. You won't even notice if your mate's crazy. You won't even notice the hardships that are going on around you. You won't even notice the stupidity that's out there. You'll just know that you live in the peace that passes all understanding. You just live in the joy that's unspeakable and full of glory. You know why people aren't flooding into the church many times in America today? It's because they look at so-called Christians and they're just as unhappy as anybody else is. They're just as worried as everybody else is. Their ministers are just as negative as everybody else is. But I want you to know that if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And that fellowship, baby, is out there. Unbelievable. Unbelievable to talk to God. Unbelievable to fellowship with the king of kings. You might as well say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God's good. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Stay with me just a few more minutes. Hallelujah. Have you getting something from the Word? Yeah. Psalms, Psalms, I mean, pardon me, John 14, 27. I got ahead of myself. John 14, 27. Peace, I leave with you. Peace, I give. Everybody say give. It's a gift from Jesus. He just, he left his peace here. He gives his peace. He just leaves it. He gives it. If I can convince you that no matter what you hear, no matter what goes on, you can live in the peace of God. I want you to live in peace all of 2014. How will you be able to grow in in, in believing if you're peaceful? If that mind is peaceful, how much stronger can you believe God and trust God for the breakthrough, for the miracles, for the, for the signs and the wonders that you need in your family, you need in your finances if you're just at peace? How will you be able to live? How will you be able to conduct yourself without that worry? No worry. That's what peace is. An absence of, absence of war, absence, silence, quiet, still. Come on. Quiet, still, just, just an absence of drama. It might be all around you, but it's not in you. Christ in me, the hope of glory. My body, your body is a temple for the living God, not a garbage dump for worry or fear or anxiety. If I could use, a, use an old hee-haw expression, gloom, despair, and agony on me, deep, dark. Mm. Amen. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Let n- <laughs> not as the world gives, give unto you. Let not. Everybody say, let not. That means it's up to me. Let not my heart be troubled. Just don't be troubled. First Peter 5, 7, throw that care over on the Lord. Well, you don't know what I'm going through, but I know what Jesus went through to overcome what you're going through. If you'll get your eyes back on that old rugged cross on a hill not very far away. If I'd have wrote that, uh, I believe in our hymn books growing up, it was uh, 33, page 33. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. If I'd have wrote it, I'd put it on a hill not very far away. I don't need that hill to be far away. I need it to be real close. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Stood an old rugged cross. You need to go with me. We'll go to the place of the skull in Jerusalem in November. We will go to the empty tomb in November. You'll get to see it with me. You'll, you'll step inside the empty tomb with me. Oh, my God. It, it's the most. And when you actually look at the hill, it actually looks like a skull. You're just standing there looking at it, and it looks just like a skull. It's remarkable. You don't have to have a troubled heart. You don't have to have a worried mind. Peace I leave with you. Somebody say amen. Amen. My plan is to live 2014 no no matter what. I've got 11 telephone calls Monday alone, Sunday night into Monday, for people to pray for people. I'm watching God heal all 11 of those people. You don't have to worry. You don't have to fall apart. You don't have to beg. You can just get down in peace that know that nothing is impossible with God. By his stripes, we are healed. Look what the Lord has done. And just pray in faith with just your peace and joy. Oh, my God, I know somebody's going to shout a little bit with me. I'm expecting by now somebody just jump up and turn around and jig for me in the name. How many of you love the Lord? Say amen. Stay up with me now. Almost through. Glory to God. Mm. 
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Isaiah 53, 5 tells me how. He was wounded for our. Look at it right there. He was wounded for our. If you write in your Bible, write O-U-R. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we are healed. O-U-R, our and we. Everything he did, he did for us. That's what we're going to have to believe. That's what we're going to have to step into. That's what we're going to have to let get inside us. That's the rock that we stand on. Quit hanging on and start standing on. Quit trying to hang on and stand on the promises of Christ my King. Believe it, believe it, receive it. Stay at peace no matter what you see, no matter what goes on, no matter what a doctor says, no matter what you see happening in the life of your children. And you say, you know, I'm praying and I'm asking God to do something for my child, do something for my mate, do something, but they're just getting worse. Then don't, don't think that God's not doing something. Don't think that God's not answering. He's talking, he's moving, he's touching. He's waiting for you to get at peace with it and just keep praising him, just Stay at peace with it. Because as long as you were, the enemy is going to give you something to worry about. A while back, I was called to the hospital to pray for a a, a child uh, just about the size of your little boy. The child was dying. And the doctor, they they couldn't find a reason. Alex, they they just couldn't find a reason. And I thought it was kind of weird when I got there in the first place, the mama and the daddy weren't there. Yeah. Well, that kind of makes you crazy. I thought, I need to go find a gun and shoot him in the foot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Blessed are the preachers that carry weapons. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What do you go to church at Six Gun Sam's? <laughs> Yosemite Sam. <laughs> Ooh. Roughest, toughest, meanest Tom Bray. Ooh, I love your Samity Sam. <laughs> oh my God. And I went in there, no, no, no parent, no grandparent, no nothing. And I'm watching this baby hooked up with IVs and the doctor comes and I'm just, Lord, give me an answer, give me an answer, give me an answer. And the scripture came up, a broken spirit dries the bones. That's what it says, Proverbs. A broken spirit, a broken heart, a broken heart can make a child sick. A broken heart can make an adult sick. Broken heart. Am you with me? People don't know that when your mate breaks your heart, you're susceptible to sicknesses and diseases. I wish somebody just heard what I just said. You can't allow nothing to break your heart. How do you know? Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of your own life. That word issue is a Hebrew word that means maintenance. Guard your heart with all diligence for out of it comes the maintenance for your life. Your heart is your maintenance man inside the temple of the living God. Are y'all with me? Your heart is your maintenance man. That's why the Lord says, I will write my word on the table of your heart. That way your maintenance man has something to work with on. Yeah. Go, ahead, go ahead and praise God. Go ahead and go crazy. Go ahead and go crazy. Lock the door so they can run around inside the building and not run out the door. So I, I, got, the, I got the parent's phone. And I said, man, this, I just, I'm going to tell you, I've been praying and this child has a broken heart. Are y'all fussing? Are y'all fighting? What are y'all doing? Are y'all fussing? Are y'all fighting? They said, yeah, we're... We've been fussing and fighting, cussing each other. In fact, we're, 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 we're fixing to go get lawyers and we're going to have a, we're, we're divorcing. I said, oh. I said, can I get y'all to meet with me uh, this afternoon at the hospital, in the hospital room with your child? Yes. They, they came. They were, they, were, they, were, they were out there messing around. Come on. They were just out there messing around. They came. And I prayed with them, and they begin to weep. They begin to break. And they did it in front of the, the baby. About your son's age. They did it in front of the baby, and the baby's eyes are watching mom and dad reconciled in the hospital room in the presence of God. 
And in 24 hours, they checked that child out of the hospital. Fine. Reconciliation is so powerful. The enemy can't handle it because God is a God of reconciliation. Jesus is the Savior of reconciliation. And we are ministers of reconciliation. And when we reconcile, it's so godly. It is so wonderful. It heals. It delivers. And we've got to get all this separation between people out of the way. Separation in every kind of situation. Come on. There are people living together, married to each other, but still got a little bit of separation between each other. And that's exactly what the enemy works in, is something that we give, give no place to the devil. I just want to lift your hands and say, man, God Almighty, I should have. Huh. Preach again tomorrow night, I'll come again. Give no place. Everybody say it. Give no place. Worry is a place. Arguing is a place. Huh? Just a little, little something. Have you ever had just something happen and all of a sudden you're thinking about another person? that you shouldn't be thinking about? Or you're thinking about just something, I'm just going to get in on the car and I'm just going to drive away. That's where the enemy can work in a thing. Mm. He's looking for distance between two people. He's looking for distance between you and God. He's looking for any distance that can be put between you and God. Oh, you might as well just give God a crazy praise anyway. Have you know that I'm telling the truth right now? Huh? Hallelujah. Let's just say, let's just say that Fonda knocks all my teeth out. Out and, and I go over to my mother and I say, Mama, Fonda, no, Mama. I can't even. And I, and I tell you, and I tell you, and I tell you, and I talk to you, and I tell you, and I tell you. All of that telling, the enemy is just going to move right into it. And I'm going to tell you, young people, that when you talk to your parents about things that are out of line, even in your own marriage, you're just giving an opportunity to the enemy. You might as well just amen me anyhow. Because the only person that can fix everything is Jesus. I'm just going to wait here. I'm just going to wait on you. I, I'm just going to wait on you. You want peace is Jesus. You may feel better that you told somebody, but the enemy's going to move in on it. Come on. How many of y'all love me? Amen. Let's keep going. I'm almost through. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalms 55, 11. He hath delivered my soul in peace. He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. For there were many against me I think they have the wrong scripture up there amen did I give you the wrong one hallelujah I'm sorry y'all forgive me let me give you that scripture again he had delivered my soul in battle from the enemy delivered my what my soul what does God deliver my soul in the battle. He, he delivers my soul in the battle. What, 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 what part of me gets involved in the battle? My mind. What part of me gets involved in the trouble? My mind. When my mind gets involved, then my flesh is going to jump in. He delivers my soul. Look at this scripture, Romans 8, 6. To be carnally minded is death. That's what the enemy wants. He wants my mind on the stuff. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be carnally minded, to get my mind on all this stuff, 
to get my mind on every situation, my mind on every circumstance, to get my mind on cause. It's death. It's just going to work death. It's just going to work fear. It's just going to work worry. And if I worry and I fret and I'm afraid, in time, that's going to mess with my body. I watched a program the other night because this uh, medicine interests me. Medications interest me. How many understand that? I mean, I believe in the I believe in the healing power of Jesus. How many with me? Say amen. And I was watching a special on some of the medicines that they're using right now. That they're using right now that they do not know yet what it will cause 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road. But they know all medicines cause something later on. Will y'all admit that with me? They may make me a little bit better now, but that medicine's going to work against my body even later on. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow to it. The reason why the ladies and gentlemen the church has got to get back to believing and living in peace is because when we live that way and we really trust God we don't have to worry about later on down the line our body breaking down because we've been at peace we've not been at worry we've been putting the right thing on the inside of us which is even more important than the good food it's the good word of God because man does not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now, now, Brother Dolan, can I, can I just have you come stand right here? How many of y'all love Brother Dolan? On his, on his next birthday, he will be 80 years old. 80 years old. He had, a, he, had a, he had a heart murmur. He had a leaking heart. His heart was leaking blood. Da, 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 da. All of this stuff was going on. He couldn't even get out of bed. He couldn't even get out of bed. I'd call every day. I'd talk to her and... I'd give him the word to give her the word. I said, here's what you do. You say this to him. He's in there, and, he, and, and when he can, he opens that Bible up, and he reads it, and he reads it, and he reads it, and he reads it, and he even does some crazy stuff. He even backs away from all of the work that he needs to do, and he just gets into the word of God. He just gets into the word of God because it's life to those that find it. And he starts finding things in the word of God. He goes to the doctor. The heart murmurs healed. Even the leak is completely sealed and gone. Over with. Completely. Completely. And God gives him a brand new lease on life. Heartaches don't get better, they get worse. Unless you you got the Word of God. Give the Lord a crazy praise. It's the truth, isn't it? It's It's the truth. truth. You can worry about it. You can fall apart over it. You know what Brother Dolan did? He did exactly what we talked about. Leave the realm of glory you're in and get into the next realm of glory that God has for you. That's all we've been preaching all year long is that you just become a stronger believer. You leave this realm of glory. You step into the next realm of glory. And I mean that they could stand up here and tell you how many things have been fixed, how many things have been turned around, how many things have happened and blessed them in the name of Jesus. And guess what did it? The Word of God did it. How many of y'all love Jesus? Say amen. Ooh, I'm almost through. To be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. Next verse. Look at there. Because the carnal mind is the enemy of God. So the enemy's got to make it. The devil, the lies, the fears, the worry, the interruption, the chaos. Somewhere in your family, either in yourself, your mate, your child, work somewhere. The enemy's got to get you carnally or fleshly or worldly or problem minded so that he can work that death situation around you. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Everything that you've ever faced, everything that's going on, oh my God. Do you mean to tell me that if, if that is bothering me, and the enemy knows that that is bothering me, that can grow and shift to this person, even if this person leaves and shift to another. Yes, if it bothers you and the enemy can find that it disrupts your peace and brings you fear, worry, anger, care, whatever that it is, he's going to work it. Amen. And you... 
So if I tell somebody that Fonda did that, come on. Not only am I not going to have any teeth, I'm not going to be able to see or hear. Amen. Are you with me? I want you to look at me. Telling somebody about your stuff that is not a prayer warrior is inviting trouble. I don't care if it's your mama, your daddy. I don't care if it's your best friend. If they're not as strong in the Lord or more strong than you are, the enemy is going to look at it that you're doing it for pity, for solace. Oh, boy, Heidi, the praise is just rising up here like crazy. I'm, I'm fixing to finish. How, how many times have I finished so far? How many? Four? All right, got one more to go. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's finish this up. Philippians 4, 7. Philippians 4, 7. Sorry about that Psalms, but it's there. And the peace of God which passes. The peace of God which passes. Wait a minute. Or is more superior. Help me now. The peace of God that is more excellent, more superior, and greater passeth the peace of God which is superior or greater or more excellent than all my mind. Because the word understanding there is the Greek word for mind. So the peace of God is greater and more superior than any other thought I can have in my mind. Are you with me? So somewhere along the line, that son, that daughter, that child, that whatever that it is, I've got to let the peace of God get in there and stay in there because it will keep a superior, more excellent thought, feeling, emotion, frame of mind than anything else in my mind. Whoo. Y'all going to think I'm crazy. And the enemy can talk you out of being somewhere the day you're supposed to be there with an invitation not to be there and to throw you completely out of whack because you went to do it on your own feelings and not because God told you to go do it. And the enemy knows that that's just a feeling that you wanted to fulfill. And while you're out there fulfilling a feeling, the enemy can mess with you. That's why the Bible warns you, say tomorrow if it is God's will, I will. Just lift your hands up and give God a crazy praise. Are you listening to the answers that I'm trying to bring to your mind? Are you listening to the very things that I'm trying to tell you? There is no reason to do anything anymore in your life unless you know it's God. Amen. Mm. Have you with me? No matter what the pool is, no matter what the pool is. Why? Because the enemy wants to induce a feeling. He'll get you spending your money off a feeling. I know it's hard to believe. I know it's hard to believe. A man goes to the Texas Ranger baseball game last year, I believe, or the year before. He takes his son because they've always wanted to go. He's watched it with his son. They go to the game. There's a ball hit. The man wants to so bad get it for his son that he stretches too far and falls to his death. He wants it so bad. I know that it, I know I know maybe this is a crazy way to bring it out but the enemy wants you to want stuff so bad Amen. that you can have an accident. Amen. He wants you to want something so bad that you're in a time of feeling yes. instead of a time of leading. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. 
That's how people marry the wrong person. Oh, well. We're ending. We're ending. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on the Lord. Stayed. Stayed. If I would have wrote it, I, that will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is glued. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Elmerized. <laughs> glued on the Lord. That's the one thing the enemy is fighting is that your mind, the battlefield is not your heart. You're sealed under the day of redemption. The battlefield is in your mind. Peace is to rule in your heart. And that word heart there is mind and spirit. Yes. It's to rule in your mind. Amen. It's to rule in your mind. People ask me all the time, how come? How come I didn't this and this and this and this? And I'm going to tell them every time. It's because that when it probably came, the enemy had you in another thought, in another thing. Yes. And it just passed you by. Because in everything, God makes a way. Yes, Are y'all going to agree with me on that? Yes. In everything, God makes a way. But if we're not there, the Lord even told Elijah, I've, I want you to go down to the river Zarephath. I, have, I want you to go down there because I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Everybody say there. So if he wasn't there, here came the ravens with some subway. Here they come, and he's not there. And they show up for six months wondering where he is, and he's not there. But thank God he got there, and he stayed there, and he got fed there. And how many of you know that some of us have missed six months of miracles in a row? Six months of daily blessings every day because we just flat weren't there. And so we're turmoiled, we are distressed and troubled, and we're wondering where the blessing is, and it's simply the blessing is, is because that we weren't there. And then the Lord comes and says, well, the brook's drying up, I'm sending you somewhere else. Well, then it's gonna be easy for me to go to the next location, the next station, and then the Lord took care of him and somebody else for three years. Then the Lord sends him to a mountaintop and it turns a whole nation around. And the reason why we're not turning nothing around is because we haven't let, been the right place there and stayed there. Am I right about it? Did you notice in the there it started out just him and some birds? How many of y'all feel like that you just you and some birds? And we know that it started out just by himself there. And then it grew to him and two others, a woman and a child. And I, I, I want you to listen to my crazy mind and don't judge me. But I'm thinking, here's a guy living in the house with a woman. And God sets it up, but he's not supposed to touch the woman. He's just supposed to be there and get blessed, but without touching the wrong thing. And so he faces three years of the potential of temptation, but it doesn't happen. Anybody going to talk to me? Come on. And we got young people out there living with the other young people when they don't know they're in their three-year process of God just wanting to try to bless them. It, it, Either I'm crazy or this is the truth. Amen. And he succeeded in that three years, sister. And then God elevates him to turn a whole nation around. Yeah. Oh, my God. Fire falls from heaven. Yeah. Woo, Nelly. Keep him in perfect peace. His mind has stayed on thee. Listen now. Because he trusts. So... Me keeping my mind on the Lord and trusting the Lord is the same thing. In fact, if I can keep my mind on the Lord in that situation, that's showing the Lord that I trust him. My mind didn't think in leaving. My mind didn't think in quitting. My mind's thinking, oh, the Lord's going to do something. I believe him. 
I believe him. I believe him. I'm going to ask my wife to start playing. Hallelujah. Play Handel's Messiah. <laughs> I've got a beautiful young lady it's coming either the 5th or the 12th of January she was at the churches that I preached at with the bishops and the apostles from all over the country and she danced and it was one of the most impressive things that she danced to a, a gospel song before the Lord she's coming they're supposed to let me know the morning the January the 5th or the 12th you're really going to get blessed she's really anointed to to do this before the Lord she's an incredible young lady so while I was there one of the young ladies that used to come when we were out on Buffalo Gap Road was there and remembered that she danced for me to Michael English's when Jesus steps out and they surprised me one night and she put on her deal and she came out and she did it for me oh what a blessing they're all going to come down and be with us and she's going to dance while I preached there there was this uh, organist from Detroit that now was the music minister of the church in Little Rock and what I preached he'd pray an organ or music and make faces and you know he had he was wow so I've invited him to come and he's going to play on a Sunday morning while I preach you do not want to miss this he's crazy I mean it's crazy I preached everything I knew that night <laughs> oh my twice <laughs> pressed down shaking together and running over <laughs> Lord, I thank you right now that with all the peace of God left us, it's ours right now. We receive it. It's here right now. We don't have to pray it down. We don't have to pray it up. We just receive it. Are you going to help me now? And Lord, with that peace, in this peace, in the authority of the peace of God, I claim everybody's healing in this building right now. Every muscle, every bone, every fiber, every inch of your body healed in the name of Jesus. Every organ inside you, everything in your body, everything in your body caused by worry, anxiety, fear, turmoil, trouble, everything caused by whatever that got it there, wherever it came, by the stripes of Jesus Christ. Listen now, every mom and dad in this room. If your child, or if you're, I'm going to go there first. If your child is almost like a, is in some kind of thing like bipolar or ADD or ADHD or all of this stuff, they say now that it's over 25% of every child in America. In the name of Jesus, let the peace of God begin to rule in that little body and in that mind in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are the Prince of Peace. In Jesus' name, whatever, whatever is it, lack of this, lack of, they, they say it could be lack of zinc, it could be lack of this it could be lack of that it could be because of this because of whatever the cause Jesus is the way it doesn't matter how it came it matters to us how it leaves and by your stripes we are healed. and I pray that you will heal every person every child every adult heal heal in this house tonight heal every muscle every organ every fiber every come on are y'all with me right now every child every every grandchild let that let that healing let that healing let that he every limb every muscle every bone every every ligament every ligament begin to begin to shape right begin to curve right begin to begin to begin to be right and Lord heal every mind Every mind, every mind, 
give us peace on earth goodwill you love on the Lord with me you love on the Lord with me you love on the Lord with me just love on the Lord with me there's a healing healing stream Lady came to my service at the Four Sixes Ranch. She had Guillaume Beret, which is a French polio. I didn't know it. All the cowboys at the Sixes would come. Denise was there, you remember. I don't know if Anna Karen was there. Tanya might have been there. You were there. You played the piano that night probably or something. I don't remember. Fonda was there. Mama was there. I'd been invited up there and I preached there for over a year. I preached a revival there three nights in a row, right on, right in the Civic Center on the ranch. And uh, they let me go fishing. I'm one of the few people that let go fishing on the ranch. Just let me get up there and go fishing. I needed the chuck wagon and the cowboys. And all of them came and the woman came. She had gown beret, but the power of God knocked her on the floor. I didn't knock her. Knocked her on the floor. She tried to get up. She couldn't even get up. And she went back to the doctor. The doctor said, all I can tell you is that this polio is complete. She was in her 40s and every, every bit of polio left her body. Every bit of polio. Today she leads praise and worship in a church. Stands just as straight, no crooked, no nothing. Well, the way that I got there to it is that Billy Paul and Tavia Vincent were separated. In fact, they were not even living. You know, they were living like kind of with other people. And their kids were living with other adults because they were living. And Denise had invited them or somebody. Had you invited them to come to the service? And they were out in the parking lot cussing each other. And Tavia popped Billy Paul right in the face. And they said, let's go in there. Let's just go in there and get it over with. So they got out of the car. They, hold it down. Hold it down. Be quiet. We're going into the church. And their hands touched the doorknob. And they started weeping. And their hands touched the doorknob. Am I telling the truth? Stand right there. and when, if, While I am, you nod your head. Let everybody know I'm telling the truth. They came in. They came in, God healed their marriage, reconciled. Their kids were staying with other people and their kids said to the other people, you need to take us home. Something's happened to our mom and our dad without even talking on the telephone. The kids sensed it and knew it. And when Billy, Paul and Tavia got home, the kids were waiting on them at the house. Am I telling the truth? Today, Billy Paul pastors a church up around, is it, Bulger, Texas. He's passing a church here in Tavia. Isn't God good? God knows how to bring us from a mighty long way. What is that? Peace. Reconciliation. Oh, Lord. Oh. Isn't it beautiful? Say it with me. It's beautiful. How many need some of that around your lives? Peace I leave with you. Peace I leave with you. Peace I leave with you. Peace I give unto you. Come up here and hold my hand. Come on, Granny, get up with Fanny and get up here with me. <laughs> Peace I leave with you. Say that with me. Peace I leave with you. Peace down into your body. Peace down in your intestines. Peace down inside you. Peace on your face. Peace on your life. Peace in every area of your life. Come on, are you too tired to hear me? Come on. Peace, peace. Wonderful peace. There's no victory greater than peace. There's nothing like it. I'm going to live 365 days in it next year. Perfect peace. Perfect peace. Say it with me. Perfect peace. Now 
I'm going to worry about my kids, my grandkids, my mate, my church, my ministry, because it's all God anyhow. Just say that with me. It's all God's. Let's tell him, it's all God's. Come on, are you with me? Have you given it to God? Then he's going to take care of it. Would you worship him with me? I give you my love. I give you my trust. I give you my praise. I, I give you the glory. I give you the glory. I give you the glory. I'm leaning on you, Lord. I trust you. Listen to her just for a minute. 